Once you learn the tricks of the thrift store shopping trade, you can find plenty of gems for a fraction of their original cost. But there are a few things you'll want to keep in mind before you dive in. This is the dirty truth about thrift stores. Some of the biggest thrift stores are nonprofit organizations, but it's a common misconception that all thrift stores are nonprofits. As it happens, many thrift stores are for profit. If you're looking to support your community, it pays to pay attention. Kristen McCormick, director of Boston University's nonprofit management program, said that while for profit companies are beholden to their shareholders, most nonprofits are pretty proud of their mission, and their financial data is generally pretty transparent, too. Nevertheless, some for profit thrift stores donate to charity. Beacon's Closet, a for profit New York City thrift store chain, donates clothing they are unable to sell to various charities. According to the company's site, Beacon's Closet has donated over $100,000 to charity as of August 2019. Your local thrift store may donate to charity more, less, or not at all, so you may find it beneficial to do some digging. In 2015, the Seattle Times reported that Value Village thrift stores were sued for being misleading about what percentage of donations actually went to charity. In late 2019, a judge ruled that the organization had indeed violated the law and misled its customers into believing the stores were not-for-profit. These sorts of laws help protect consumers, of course, but it's important to note that even bona fide nonprofit thrift stores don't donate all of their money to charity or use all of it on their programs, though the Better Business Bureau stipulates that at least 65% must go towards those programs. This means there are a lot of variables in how nonprofits can use the rest of their revenue. Who's buying the booze? You are! Who's buying the food? Goodwill reportedly spends almost 90% on job training and sustainability, with 11% set aside for administration costs and a small remainder for fundraising. The Salvation Army, on the other hand, spends 75% on programs, according to Charity Navigator. Goodwill is very charitable, but wage disparity is an ongoing issue plaguing this particular nonprofit thrift store. Citing federal tax records, the World Herald reported that Goodwill Omaha paid CEO Frank McGree nearly $1 million combined in salary and various bonuses in 2014. Oh, and a membership to a country club. Additionally, 13 other executives and managers received yearly salaries of over $100,000 that same year. Considering Goodwill is a $6.1 billion company, you may reason that they simply pay their employees well. Not so fast. While some higher-ups were making bank, many disabled employees were earning well under minimum wage, according to Forbes, due to the legal loophole in the Fair Labor Standards Act. Loophole! In the end, though, the incident resulted in McGree stepping down as CEO. Whether you shop at Goodwill, The Salvation Army, or any other thrift store, there are bound to be some less-than-pleasant finds. Thankfully for customers, most of these are caught before making it out onto the floor. Of course, this still royally sucks for the employees. Having to cycle through people's junk, they come across things that are in such deplorable condition that they may actually damage other donations. So before donating anything, maybe give everything a courtesy glance so that you don't accidentally ruin someone's day. Many thrift stores publish their do's and don'ts about donating. Goodwill, for example, doesn't accept large appliances like stoves or old-style televisions. It may go without saying, but thrift stores also don't want to be burdened with hazardous materials, sometimes spanning entire categories of items. However, this isn't exactly foolproof. If you hit up your local thrift stores on a regular basis, you've probably seen some items that caused you to turn your head. Other times, though, you may not even realize when something for sale poses a health hazard. Major Jerry O'Neill, who assists in overseeing the Salvation Army stores in Minnesota, revealed in an interview, What many of our donors don't realize is that we have strict rules to follow. Breaking these rules can result in costly fines or lawsuits. The Salvation Army further revealed that federal inspectors often pay visits to their stores to make sure the organization isn't selling anything that's been deemed hazardous or has been recalled. Nevertheless, recalled items do have a way of winding up on thrift store shelves from time to time. Of the thrift shops examined by the United States Consumer Product Safety Commission, 69% of those visited contained at least one hazardous product. This varied from certain children's clothing with drawstrings, bad cribs, and old hair dryers that did not have the mandated safety plug. So it might just be best to avoid buying certain things when at thrift stores, especially when it comes to baby items. 
If you're a collector of vintage items, a secondhand store can be a gold mine. However, there are plenty of risks lurking in the aisles of your favorite thrift shop. According to researcher Laurel Sharmer of the State University of New York at Potsdam, since used items are not regulated as strictly, it's more possible to bring home items that contain lead. As part of a study on secondhand items purchased from thrift, junk, and antique stores in Virginia, New York, and Oregon, Sharmer and her team found that many of the items contained surface lead concentrations some 700 times higher than the federal limit. So if you plan to buy vintage items from your thrift store, you shouldn't assume they're safe. Even if every donor takes care to donate responsibly, thrift stores can't sell everything. At times, this is because the condition of the donation isn't deemed fit for resale, or it could be that the store simply doesn't have the floor space. Stacy Morrell, manager of a thrift store in Oregon, said the store where she works has a system for such donations. She told Mental Floss that the best items are taken to a consignment store, whereas items that were displayed but didn't sell are sent to a larger thrift store. Any clothing that doesn't meet the store's guidelines are given to local homeless shelters or a recycling facility. According to Morell, who also works at Goodwill, the large nonprofit works a bit differently. The items that don't sell well or are deemed unfit for resale are sent to Goodwill outlets, where customers can then buy items by the pound. Things that don't end up selling at thrift store outlets then hit the Goodwill auctions. Next, items that weren't able to find homes with lucky bidders are sent to a textile recycling organization. According to the Secondary Materials and Recycled Textiles Association, that 30% of what their organization receives gets processed into industrial rags, 20% is shredded into soft fiber filling for furniture and other items, and 5% is sent to the landfill. However, approximately 45% of the clothing that ends up with the organization is either resold within the United States clothing industry or shipped overseas. While this may sound better than getting sent to the landfill, the publication pointed out that it can lead to clothes being perpetually cycled through, and sending clothes overseas can hurt developing countries' economies. When you venture into a thrift store, you get a whiff of a very distinctive smell. What's that? <laughs> what? That, that smell. What's that smell? What smell? Incidentally, scientists actually analyzed the molecules that make up this quintessential scent and found that the vast majority were from body oils like sweat. Eek! The remaining scents were various compounds of perfume, food, gasoline, and other everyday contaminants. A thrift store smell may be fine for, you know, a thrift store, but you may not desire to wear that scent. However, dry cleaning isn't always going to solve the problem, so give some serious consideration to whether looking good is more important than smelling funky. Okay, so thrift store clothes may have an odd smell, but thrifting connoisseurs still recommend trying on secondhand clothes before buying. Trying on clothing at a thrift store may give you the heebie-jeebies, and quite rightfully so. Tamarin Tidwell, general manager of a chain of thrift stores in Massachusetts, admitted that most thrift stores don't wash clothing donations before they're put up for sale. Ew. Hmm, it's no wonder they hold on to their scent. So please be sure to give your clothes a good laundering before boxing them up, and especially wash them after buying. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about your favorite bargain shops are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.